Naomi, and she's reading Masa's Baki. Naomi Hirahara is the Edgar Award winning author of the Maserai Mystery Series, which features a Japanese American gardener and atomic bomb survivor who solves crimes. Her next mystery, Strawberry Yellow, will be published by Prospect Park Books in March 2013, and she is currently working on a new series featuring a 22 year old female bicycle cop in downtown Los Angeles. Naomi. Thanks. I'm going to be reading from my first mystery called Summer of the Big Bachi. And uh, Bachi, does anyone know what that means? That means when what goes around comes around. And another word you might, ooh, you might want to know is uh, picadon, which means atomic bomb. Maybe someone could just hold this for me. <laughs> Hello? Okay, cool. Street, he saw a black, shiny Lincoln Continental parked alongside the curb. A few neighbors had the same car, but theirs were 20 years older, with a generous shares of dents and scratches. This one looked all wrong in front of his house, and when Moss walked up to his porch, he found his hunch was on target. Standing by the door was a man wearing large gold rimmed glasses and a turtleneck sweater. Shuji Nakane. The high-toned fellow didn't waste any time. You lied to me, he said straight away. Moss felt the anger flush up to his earlobes. What no good Japanese man would call a stranger a liar in front of that stranger's own house? He could push this Nakane off the porch into a long abandoned rock garden filled now with broken glass and gravel. You told me that you weren't friends with Haneda-san, Nakane said. I have no business with you. Moss made it a point to speak English. He didn't want Nakane to get the wrong idea that they shared anything in common. He tore open the screen door, which flapped off its hinges. Moss had meant to fix that someday. As Moss fumbled with his keys, Nakane was unrelenting. In fact, you knew him very well, like brothers. He pushed a photo in front of Moss's nose. It was an old-fashioned black and white photograph about wallet size. At first, Moss made no connection to the image, but then he began to focus more carefully. It was a stone bridge, the kind that you often saw in Hiroshima before the war. This one had been near the train station, Moss remembered. Three boys in black school uniforms stood on different spots on the bridge. That's you. Nakane's manicured finger pointed to the middle boy in between the other two, taller and lean. Those other boys, too, in fact, resembled each other, lookalikes with strong noses. But one was born in California, like Moss, while the other was a native Hiroshima boy. Where you get this, that is not your concern. Well then, I have no concern. Moss finally op opened the front door and attempted to close it behind him when the screen door fell down, almost knocking Nakane's glasses off his face. We can give you money for information, hissed Nakane, stepping over the torn screen. Moss kept the door open a crack. Who's we? My associates and I. We are prepared to make you a generous offer. You'd be wasting money. I have no information. You were with him, weren't you, when the picadon fell? What happened to him? Where is he now? I don't know no Joji Haneda. Don't come round here anymore, Nakane-san. There's nothing I can help you with. His chest pounding, Moss slammed the door shut. He waited to hear the hum of an engine and pulled back the curtains an inch to see the Lincoln Continental drive away. Moss stumbled into the kitchen and opened the refrigerator for Budweiser. After taking a gulp, he paused by the sink and looked out the window. For a moment, he imagined two pairs of dark eyes, ones he had seen before, peering at him. Son of a... Moss gasped, and he quickly pulled the curtains together. What? Are you losing your mind? Just nerves, he told himself. 
but he went from room to room, clicking on the lights and checking every closet, until he finally returned to the bedroom and lay down on his side. From his position, he could see the stack of old magazines by the bed. He knew that it was third one down, under the February AAA magazine and the Japanese go book. He knew practically every page by heart, the brunette in the royal blue panties, the blonde with the swollen basketball chichi. He lowered his hand towards the magazines and then stopped. He licked his lips. It's no good, he muttered. Damn you, old woman, where are you? His heart ached for those sagging empty breasts and the stomach lined with scars from surgery after surgery. He should have done it to her during her last days, ignored the smell of sickness and held her. He heard a crash outside. Was it the local alley cat overturning the trash cans again? Ma stood up quickly, spilling his beer on, onto the green carpet. Once he reached the back door, there was only a strange and eerie silence. Moss felt the presence of at least another human being. Haro, Moss called out, but no one replied. He then went to the front to check. Moss stepped out onto the cement porch. The neighborhood was quiet for once. No police helicopters flying overhead, and the teenagers seemed to be away, probably causing havoc in a place with more life. The moon was almost full, and Moss caught a rectangular shape amid the glass and other trash in the old rock garden below. Moss knelt down and fished out the new addition to his garden. It was the black and white photograph of the three boys on the bridge. Nakane must have dropped it when, he, the, when the broken screen door had fallen down on him. Why is you following me? Moss muttered out loud. He felt like destroying that photograph, but thought better of it. He had seen Joji Haneda burn once before. Moss couldn't do it to his friend a second time. Thank you.